when I was six years old, I went with my dad uh, to Beverly Hills because he was a painter. And he took me and it was a mansion in Beverly Hills. And I saw a red Ferrari park outside. And I asked my dad, dad, like, why are you doing this to us? Like, why do we live in the ghetto, in the ugly house? Why, why don't you just move? Why don't we move in here in this mansion and I get a red exotic car? I, so my dad told me, because this is not for us. And I, and I asked him, well, how can I get it? And I went through all my failures and, and uh, I lost everything in 2008. And yeah, for a moment, moments I thought, is, it, is this really worth it? Should I just quit? When I remembered my dad, I promised him that one day I was gonna grow up and be very successful and I was gonna help change a lot of lives and I was gonna be rich, so rich that I was gonna live in Beverly Hills, have a Ferrari and help people and, and be remembered like a legend. And, and I'm just doing whatever I have to do. This is, we, we've been, you've been, everybody has been through uh, tough situations. This is just another tough situation we're going to get over. So we got to keep uh, keep attacking and uh, people that give up and, and quit and get stressed out and get scared, uh, they're going to they're gonna be in a bad place. But uh, all I do is I try to inspire people to uh, go out there and fight. Because if you don't fight, if you don't fight, you have to look at it, look at this like a, like an opportunity to fight for your life, to fight for your dream. Because if you get through this, these next six months, month seven, eight, nine, you're gonna just take off and you're gonna be number one. Because everybody's gonna, a lot of people are gonna quit. 100%, no, I like I like that, I like that. So how, I see that, you know, you, you look very strong. How are you keeping in shape? Mentally and physically, so oh, I see you. I'm doing yeah, you don't have a beard, you're nice and shaved and you you know, you know seem fresh. So you're not taking it as something which has slowed the world down. You keep, you seem to be marching on. Yeah, like I have some small weights and and uh, I actually bought them for sale, my wife. But but those those weights are a little, a little small for me because they're not that heavy and I like the heavier weights. So I'm doing more reps. So I'm just doing more more repetitions. And then what I'm doing is I'm, I'm running. I'm just, I go outside, we're allowed to go outside and, and, and run. So I'm running five miles a day. So I'm doing five miles a day and I'm doing like a lot of, a lot of reps. I'm working out every muscle, shoulders, chest, triceps. Uh, and, and I'm just doing whatever I have to do. I'm not stopping. Awesome. Wow. You know, so, uh, Albert, you know, we, I, we all believe in something called the hero introduction. When you have an opportunity to meet another human being, one opportunity can change your life. So yeah. always be prepared to tell people who you are from the heart. So my introduction, you know, that's how we introduce ourselves. My name is Avi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a streetcar registered hotelier, now social media marketer and founder of internet moguls. To people who don't. Yeah. So, so you, because uh, it's cut enough. Are you guys, are you guys good with the, with the? Is it lagging on your side or no? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think you guys have a better connection. Is my connection good? Yeah. Yeah, I switched to the other one now. Yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, a BG. Is that how you say your name? Abi, Abi is good. Abi. Abi, Abi. So I think Abi's connection is is a little bit slow, but um. I heard your introduction. Is that is that what I what you want me yes. to do to introduce yes, me? Yes. How would Albert introduce himself to our audiences who who, who who are meeting you here for the first time? Okay. Well, Albert is a guy that's driven, a guy that has uh, a lot of courage, uh, more than uh, more than you can imagine. And uh, Albert is not a quitter. So Albert is a person that started from nothing, from zero, and 
I've been through it all. I've made mistakes, uh, mistakes that led to me. You know, your your little girls are watching this, but I when when I got a little older, I started going to parties and started drinking, and then I went out parties, and then I got pulled over. I ended up in jail for drinking and driving. I lost everything in 2008 because of the mortgage uh, meltdown, and and I I just had bad priorities. I was making mistakes. I was hanging around with the wrong people, and then growing up. I was a minority, a minority. I, I spoke Spanish. My, my Spanish was my first language that my parents taught me. And I was here in, in, in America and in, in, in LA. So when I went to school, everybody spoke English except me. And I was bullied, made fun of, called wet pack, and just tortured and humiliated. And then I just fought. And all my life has been a fight. So th times like these are like, they tickle me because <laughs> uh, I, I, I've been through so many things that this is just like a, I mean, it's like a joke to me, but, but, but I know that it's serious because some people are, are getting affected and some people are dying. But what I, have, what, I, what I want people to understand is that, hey, yes, you got to take, uh, you got to be uh, just respectful to others. You don't want to be touching people. You don't want to be in their face or, or you got to respect others, uh, clean yourself. And elderly people that are a little older right. and just be res respectful for them but reality is that it kills two percent of the people 98 percent of people that get this virus are good so every there's a lot of things going on but as a leader uh albert's also a leader so albert opened four companies from zero uh nobody helped him fund them uh he created them uh he's been close to going out of business like a hundred times and he's uh -huh. still standing, and Albert's gonna keep standing. And and uh, anything, uh, and you can you can do anything, and uh, anything is possible. So that's why I'm saying, uh, like, like these mo moments are the moments where I take it as a responsibility to be a role model for your little girls, kids that are out there, millennials, and even the the elderly that are watching me. Sometimes I'm a little bit blunt and and too transparent, and people might get offended. But I'm the most humblest guy you'll meet. I don't want to do harm to anybody. I'm not better than anybody. Uh, I'm just Albert. And uh, sometimes the truth just has to be heard. And that's that's who I am. Lovely. Love that. Love that. Thank you so much. Aviana, over to you. Okay. So my first question is, how do you, um, you know, hustle hard, work on your business, like improve your business or um, keep going with your business, but also spend quality time with your family and like, like, maybe like take your family out somewhere or just spend quality time with them well i i'm i involve them in my um i include them in everything i do so i when i do my my um my lives i have italia there with me sometimes when uh, we come to the office uh, we bring him to the office we're gonna bring them today but we changed their mind uh and then a lot of times i um i take her like I, I spend time with her when I go on trips to get mentored or to work workshops or to events, I always include her and I, I make them part of my life. I don't adapt to her life. I, I make her adapt to my life because if I'm not running my life right, like right now, like I, I wanna be with her playing in the house and watching TV and eating bread and popcorn like everybody else, but I can't. I have to come out here and work because if not, I'm gonna end up with my daughters in the street with no food. So I, I, I have a responsibility to go out there and work so that I can take care of her, especially in times like these. I have to step it up. So, um, but I, I FaceTime her when I get home. Hey, uh, these times are gonna be a little bit harder to spend more time with her, but I'm still gonna give her, even if it's 30 times of my one-on-one -on -one time where I put my phone down and I, and I listen to her because if, I'm, if she's saying, hi, Papa, and I'm on my phone, then uh, it's not gonna be, it's, not gonna, it's gonna be disrespectful to her. Perfect, perfect. You're absolutely right. You know, a lot of people saying that, you know, on, on social media, why are entrepreneurs talking about business? This is not the right time. But commerce is what's going to keep the world going uh, strong. That's the only thing that entrepreneurs can do to fight back to keep the machinery going. So I love yeah. when you said that you have, you, ha you know, this is the time when we have to hustle harder and step it up. Yeah, that's right. Raya, over to you. Okay, so, um, what personally um i started vlogging this year um and i kind of try to spread the message amongst teenagers to always love yourself and um 
always know what you're worth and not let anyone else define that. And so um, sometimes it does get a little bit stressful trying to um, adjust to new ideas. Um, and the main ritual that I've developed is meditating through all of this. Yeah. So what are some of your key rituals that have helped you um, and you have implemented this throughout uh, your years? Um, and these rituals have helped you to, uh, to your success. Self-improvement and working out. So every morning, every morning, I never go a morning without self-improvement and working out but most importantly working out because uh like all of us sometimes we wake up and we're a little bit uh down because uh my dad was mean to me my mom was mean to me uh, one of my business deals uh didn't go well or i got in a fight with my wife or my husband or anything anything so we don't feel good and then um and then you have to make yourself feel good. So every morning I wake up, sometimes at three, sometimes at four. And, oh. um, and, and yeah, I, I get on, I do a, an hour of weights and 30 minutes of cardio. Wow. And, 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 then, and then that the weights just give me the, the toneness and they give me, and I guess as, like I just like the toneness, the muscle. And then when I run, it makes my blood flow too so it, it, it kind of gets all the circulation going and then I read a book uh, or I listen to audio when I'm showering when I'm running and I'm getting information that's new information that's gonna distract me positively so one of the things that I like to do is distract myself with positive things because now I'm just now instead of worrying about how I feel or what what happened or my mistake I start focusing on wow I just read this this is a great idea and this idea is going to make me a million dollars. And then working out and the blood flow, I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I just have a lot of energy. And, and um, there's, no, there's not a minute that you should spend on worrying about something you can't control. Because if you can't control it, you can't control it. I can't control the glasses uh, Avi is wearing. So, so I'm not, I'm not going gonna, I'm not, I'm not to stress, stress over it. Like, why is he wearing those glasses? He should be wearing some other glasses. But I could control if I'm going to drink some... Uh, sparkling water right now i could control if right after this i'm gonna jump on a call and, and and get a client i could control if i'm gonna get up early and work out so i focus on things i could control not on things that are the past or i can't control and that keeps my mindset always healthy always like like powerful perfect i love perfect. that so uh, tell us albert um, for people who are watching this 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 will go out to at least forty-eight thousand people in our community and many more people when it's launched online People who are saying, how does Albert get, you know, we've been following you online, we saw your LinkedIn, everything. How do you reach out to a client? I mean, uh, over the years, I'm sure you started getting better at what you were doing. So as you can lift heavier weights, you can uh, go to bigger and bigger clients. But is there, yeah. is there a phase which even frightens you even today? Like, is there a big client you say, you know what, this is a $5 million deal or $10 million deal. And then if it does excite you, make you nervous or uh, frighten you, how do you overcome it and then go and give your best to be able to get that deal? So, so, so question is, uh, the main question is if I get scared of, uh, of anything or? Of shooting big, when you want a big client, you're like, you know what, I've done so much, now I need to get to the next level. So when you go to a bigger client, you're like, okay, fine, I need to get this guy or sell this building or sell this apartment or whatever. Do you still get well, look, before a big deal? Uh, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't get nervous about, I mean, maybe I get a little bit, uh, I think about it, but I don't get, I, I don't, I really don't believe that I'm scared of anything. Uh, I don't, be, I, I don't, I don't get um, nervous about, about anything, but I, maybe it's just me lying to myself, but it's, but it's working <laughs> uh, because um, uh, if I, if I show any signs of weaknesses, it's going to affect my my people in the company it's going to affect my family and it's going to affect my daughters so i just uh i think i'm maybe I'm, i just developed this an ability to hold it inside right and i think what uh, what allows me to hold it inside like for example when i spoke in front of 500 people it was a big deal because that's scary to a lot of people sure. and i didn't think about it i just went in so kind of like one of the things that i like from from uh grant who was one of my mentors in the past was just going all in. So if, if you think about it, 
the more you think about it, the more you're gonna get nervous. But if you just go in and you eliminate any time to think about it. So the second time that I spoke, I had a thousand people. The third time, 2000 plus. Wow. And I just, don't, I just don't let myself think about fear. I just go, uh, m maybe I use fear as my, as my inspiration, sure. you know? Uh, but um, I don't, I don't, um, I do good with, with a lot of pressure. So if you want to, if you want to see Albert, like, like create uh, a billion dollar company, put a lot of pressure on me. Oh. If you want to see Albert, like, just to, to, like create something big, the more pressure you put on me, the, the better I respond. So I, I think I always need pressure because if I don't have pressure, like I, I, I it's bad for me. I need pressure. I need big uh, monster uh stresses and 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 complications and 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 i like that because i thrive i thrive when that happens and and i just uh, i i complete a task and what keeps me distracted is once we once we complete a task i move on to a bigger task so we got our, our first office here that we couldn't afford and then we afforded it because we made ourselves afford it and then we got another office here right and then we couldn't afford it and then we afforded it and then we got a third office and then we're like, okay, well, let's get a fourth office. We got a fourth office. And then we have a lot of locations that are outside. This is a corporate office. But we just got our new office. And then we have uh, uh, this market, uh, this economy that, that turns like this. So now what does that do? Yeah, for the first for the first day, I was like figuring out, well, what, what are we going to do? And, then, and, and the good thing is that I have a lot of mentors that are powerful. So I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I call a few of my mentors. And I'm like, okay, Albert's going to have to take off his hat as the CEO and owner of the company. And now I'm gonna have to go to the bottom. So I'm gonna have to start cleaning the floors, washing dishes and, and whatever I have to do to, to do everything. I gotta do more. I gotta wake up earlier and I gotta go to sleep later. I gotta see my family a little bit less or include them in things that I'm doing, but I gotta keep working because if I don't work, then, then uh, I'll die anyways. So I'm always like pushing myself for more, for more, for more. And most, important, most importantly, adapting if you don't adapt then then you die and and i'm and i'm always i'm always good with adapting that's amazing that is amazing really cool uh, albert tell us what is the role that social media has played in your life and how have you used social media to become the powerful and people around the world know you now well so social media if nobody knows you like let's say if uh, if your girls are the best um the best uh, ballet dancers okay and uh, and uh, and their youtube channel has one one subscriber it doesn't matter how good they are because nobody's going to see them but if they have uh 6000 12000 uh 100000 subscribers then more people will see them right. and if they're good more people keep subscribing and then if if, if they're really good then they start getting on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. And, and that's where everybody's going to see you right now. Because in times like this, you can't go outside. Like, so even if you're the best ballet dancer and you want to dance in the street, or if you're the, <laughs> the most beautiful person, nobody's going to see you because nobody's outside. So if you go on social media right now, everybody sees you. So I figured that out before this happened. And I said, you know, I have to invest all my money and energy and to being known on social media because that's the future and that's how I can reach the masses. And, and a billionaire told me, if you focus on helping the masses, you'll become wealthy. If you focus on helping the wealthy, you'll become poor. Can you repeat that? Mm -hmm. One second. No problem. I'm taking my vitamin C. Yeah, that's recommended during these times. <coughs> to fight the coronavirus. <laughs> but it, it gets stuck in my throat. Yeah, so a billionaire, a billionaire told me, and this is probably one of the most powerful statements that I, that I like to make. If you focus on helping the masses, you'll become wealthy. But if you focus on helping the wealthy, you'll become poor. So the reason the reason for this is because 99% of the people out there are are um, are the, the masses are middle class poor people. One percent is going to be the wealthy. There's less wealthy people. Mm -hmm. If you focus 
I'm helping 99% the masses, you're gonna change this world. You're gonna become a legend. So when I started every business, mortgage guys, how can I get, how can I help more people with their mortgages? Focus on the masses, real estate. How can I focus on, on people and, and help most people in real estate, masses? How can I help uh, focus on driven, help the masses? So I'm always, I'm, I'm making it affordable and I'm targeting the masses, minorities, Hispanics, because I'm Hispanic. So like the Latinos, they need a lot of help. Minorities need a, need a lot of help. The middle class people, the poor people, I want to help all of those people because I think the more of those people I help, the more difference I can make. So I've been following that philosophy for all my businesses and it's been uh, uh, helping, uh, working out very good. Because right now, times like this, who needs help? The poor people, the middle class people, they need help. There's, there's a lot of them out there. So uh, just being like that, like giving, helpful, caring, like I'm sure you guys can tell that I'm a, I'm a humble, uh, caring guy. I'm not the guy that you see, sometimes on Instagram, you see me screaming or, or saying a bad word or being loud because I have to get attention. And, and I could do that too, but when you meet me in person, like just one-on-one, -on -one, I'm, I'm a normal person. I'm no better than anybody else. Perfect. Right, Aviana, your turn. Um, okay, so my second question is, uh, when we were researching a little bit about you, it said that uh, you know you came from the pits and you suffered with that um, with that almost you lost everything. Um, and so, when did you start your grind, and what inspired you to start that grind? Like, why most people would just give up, but why was it that you said, "I want to do this"? When I was six years old, I went with my dad uh, to Beverly Hills because he was the painter. And I wanted to go with my, my dad to uh, see what he was doing. Why, 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 we, why did he come late, uh, home late all the time? Uh, what, is, what is my dad doing? So I asked my dad, take me with you. I want to go work with you. And he took me and it was a mansion in Beverly Hills. And I saw a red Ferrari park outside. And I asked my dad, dad, like, why are you doing this to us? Like, why do we live in the ghetto, in the ugly house? with uh, ugly cars and, and, and drug dealing and shootings going on. Like, why, why, why don't you just move, why don't we move in here in this mansion and I get a red exotic car? Because I didn't, I didn't know it was a Ferrari, but it was a Ferrari. But kids, little kids know those cars. They, they just, there's something about the cars, but kids like, especially little boys like those, those red shiny cars. So my dad told me, because this is not for us. And then that recorded in my mind and I asked him why. And he told me, because this is for the rich people, for the white people. And I, and I asked him, well, how can I get it? How can we have one? And he said, son, if you grow up and you work really hard and you never quit, you'll, you'll, maybe you'll have an opportunity to, to get that. And I, and I remembered that. And when I went through all my failures in, in elementary school, middle school, high school, mortgage, uh, I lost everything in 2008. And yeah, for a moment, moments I thought, is it, is this really worth it? Should I just quit? Should I just like uh, not live anymore? Like I didn't want to live anymore. When I remembered my dad, I promised him that one day I was going to grow up and be very successful and I was going to help change a lot of lives and I was going to be rich, so rich that I was going to live in Beverly Hills, have a Ferrari and help people and, and be remembered like a legend. I remember that I probably didn't use a legend word. But I told him I was going to help a lot of people be able to have these cars and live in these places. And uh, that always recorded here. So moments like this, I remember I go back and I'm like, I'm, I'm not a quitter. So uh, regardless, if people want to melt, people want to give up and people want to uh, get in my way or talk bad about me or spread rumors, it doesn't matter because nothing's going to stop me. Nothing. That's amazing. Juan. Thank you. Yeah, so um, my last question is, we use the term internet moguls a lot. Um, so for our definition of an internet mogul, is someone who spends quality time with their family, but also hustles hard and like works on their business. So what would your definition of an internet mogul be? Uh, repeat the last part again. H and... What would your definition of an internet mogul be? And okay, okay. So uh, I mean, my definition is somebody that uses the internet to uh, to create success. Uh, I think 
I think there's different ways of, of being successful and, and, uh, and from what I've seen from, from, uh, from your girls is uh, they are hustlers. They are uh, they're putting the content out, uh, they're, they're getting attention, uh, they're cute, uh, they, 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 they have a very, very beautiful person personality and, and heart. So um, like all that stuff is, is, is really good and you're, you, you girls are definitely uh, internet uh, moguls or, or but I would I would see you more as uh, you you are great role models for uh, for uh, all, 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 all kids growing up but for all the little girls like my daughter like my daughter's that's three one of them is three and one of them is three months especially the one that's three like she sees you and, and she's gonna get inspired and, and instead of watching YouTube stuff she's gonna be inspired to wait let me let me create my own YouTube channel let me create my own uh, videos instead of watching videos all day. So I, I think you girls are, are doing amazing. And uh, anything you uh, you have from your questions later down the road, just reach out to me. You could reach out to Steph or you could send me a DM on Instagram or or, uh, or whatever information you need. Uh, I'm, I'm here to help. That is so kind of you. Thank you so much. You know, we start because I've been traveling back and forth around the world. We spent less time. So we said, you know what, I'm going to include you in my life. So I go for conferences. I speak at about 25 conferences around the world. We take time off from school and college, uh, uh, you know, wherever we are. The, the, the mom doesn't like it, but we travel around the world. The girls come with me, they attend the conferences. They go for business seminars and all of that. We met Gary Vee, we just interviewed Grant Cardone. We went to so much. we've done everything. And we just want to make sure that we publish our second book called Internet Moguls of the World, our podcast, our online summit, and create a brand new business as three of us as partners with and take our, our aim is that to in our online school which we're going to call internet moguls of the world we're going to invite yeah. kids and their entire families to come and learn from all of you people so uh, it's it's a big plan we have and i'm doing it amongst my other businesses and the girls are doing it amongst school and dance and gymnastics and and soccer and horse riding and all of that so it, you know, it, I, we are all three of us are really thankful to you, uh, to you, for encouraging us and supporting us in this venture. Uh, so because you know what happened, uh, two years back I'd gone for a conference and I met somebody and he said, "How old is Raya, my elder one?" She was around twelve that time. I said, "Raya is twelve. He said, "Oh, so you have only six summers left with her." That was like someone punched me in the gut, and we went yeah. back. He said, "We need to do more stuff to be able to spend more time together," and. Uh, when people like you support us, we're able to, you know, we feel we're on the right track. So thanks a lot, Albert. And we'll definitely take you up on that offer. Once the program is launched, once the course is launched, once the online summit is launched, we'll send you the video, we'll send you the recording, we'll send you the book. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a one of a kind coffee table book with the top 50 internet moguls of the world. You name the person, you know, we've been able to, uh, you know, humbly with patience, uh, uh, re request, re-request, re-re-request. Some people said wait for six months, we waited for six months. We sent an email to Ariana Huffington and she said, she immediately said, post this story on my website. We posted it on her website. Um, you know, we went to Grand Cardone and, you know, took a little time, but then he said, I'm going to do a Zoom interview on my channel with you. So all great things have happened and it is allowing me to feel happier as a father, less guilty because I don't spend enough time with that show. But I just wanted to say thank you so much. You're a father of two girls as well. Two or three girls? Two. Two girls. Two. Like, I, I don't know about a third one yet, but but maybe 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 one of these days I'll find out. But but no, not not yet. Okay. So you understand how important and how 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 special today's moment is for all of us. Yeah. Well, well, one thing that I think the biggest difference uh, in me uh, between all the other uh, all the other guys uh, or or and girls out there is that. Um, I mean, m maybe what stands out to me is, is I'm, I'm a minority, I'm a Mexican, and also I'm, uh, I'm 36 years old. So I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a millennial. Uh, I, I made it to be a millennial, so I can relate to a lot of millennials, and I feel like a lot of millennials get um, uh, criticized too much. So like, I, I feel kind of like the, the, some of the, the older uh, mentors and everything, they like just, they, they don't relate as well as the way I could relate. I could relate with the with the younger millennials that are coming up, and and I think the message that I deliver to them is uh, is a bit different. 
but but I think that's one of the, the biggest difference. I, I feel like I understand them because I made all those mistakes and I also grew up with technology and some of us didn't grow up with technology and for example your little girls they're growing up with technology and this is whether you like it or not uh, you need technology you need social media because if you don't have that if you don't use it you are going to be um, you are going to be crushed by your competition right I have a quick question for you lastly yeah. on that note um, what is your message to any of the any teenagers watching this um, you know because most of the people I go to high school with they're like oh I hate myself or oh yeah, I could never do that but I do have this big dream what is something that you would say to them throughout this all I would say to them that that um, life is gonna be uh, challenging it's gonna be challenging for uh, everybody whether you are Grant Cardone and are 62 years old and have a, a, a one point I think 1.4 billion of apartments because imagine there's a lot of people right now in this time that are gonna stop paying rent for three months what's gonna happen to that that's very very scary yeah. so so that's a big problem for uh, Grant which I respect and I love and he helped me a lot but but what's gonna happen to me I have this mortgage company that was on the way up and it was valued at a high uh, amount of millions and now it went down because of what's going on so now I have a problem just like him and even kids or or, or uh, young teenagers or uh, late teenagers they have their problems that, that are that are going on so we are we all have problems no matter if you're uh, a multi multi 100 millionaire billionaire or making your first thousand so my biggest message for uh, for teenagers right now is you can be the next Kylie Jenner that's uh, 19 years old and is a billionaire if you learn and master technology and social media because she uh, the Kardashians uh, the Jenners they learn how to get attention and they mastered it and then everybody did it and they're they're all doing really good you think they're worried right now about uh what's going on they're good they're good so so like if you girls uh you don't have to wait till you're 60 to be successful you don't have to wait till you're 36 to be successful you can be more successful when you're 19 20 years old because the current world allows you to do that so take advantage of that and master that and don't let anybody that's don't let anybody ever tell you that you have to wait till later to to reach your dreams. You can reach your dreams very very early. I love that. Perfect, perfect. Albert, thank you. We asked for forty minutes of your time. We've already run three minutes over. Thank you very much for your time. The girls and I are just going to send you an Instagram message so we can stay connected over there, and we awesome. let you know how the progress of the book goes. And once the online summit and everything is ready. We send you an email so that we can get connected once again, if possible. It was amazing speaking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Albert. All the best and regards to your wife and your kids. Thank you. Thank you. Same here. Bye.